Hi, my name is Bastian Matteau and today I would like to show you how you can use the Python logging module, which is a very powerful module for uh, logging application messages. Now what we're going to do is uh, modify MyPython, which is an interactive interpreter that I developed as part of a previous video. So if you're interested in how that application came to be, you can watch that video. But here what we're basically going to do is just add a bunch of uh, debugging messages to MyPython. And we're going to use the Python standard module logging to do so. Now, first of all, there are, just to give you a bit of background, the logging module uh, works with different message types. So depending on the type of uh, the type of logging message, different things will happen. So first we have the logging.debug message type, and that is basically used for very detailed debugging output that happens during normal execution. So if nothing is going wrong, but just you want to collect essentially the maximum amount of information. Then we have the logging.info message type, um, it's similar to the debug message type, but the convention is to use it for less detailed uh, output. So basically, if you want to have uh, two different levels of detail of your debug messages, you would let use info and debug and then look either at both or one of the other, one of both, uh, depending on what you need to know. Then we have the logging.warning message. Now, that's what you would use if uh, something happens that shouldn't have happened, right? But it's not as serious to call it, so, so that you would call it an error, but it shouldn't have happened. And it is not the fault of the user, right? It is just for you as the application developer, essentially that your application is misbehaving. For things that the user does wrong, you would use the warning module and say, emit a warning.warn message. Um, and then we have the logger.error message, which is when something really goes wrong and it's bad enough to call it an error, but it's not something that brings the program to a halt, right? And then we have the logger.critical message type, and that's really for the worst errors that cause the whole program to cr come crashing down. So that's the convention. We have these five uh, message types, and these are the guidelines for when to use which message type. And obviously there's a bit of freedom, and in many cases you will use, it's quite arbitrary which exact message type you will use. What's important to know though, is that by default only warning messages and higher, so error and critical messages are shown, and debug and info messages are simply hidden and go nowhere. But we will see that we can actually modify that behavior. Okay, now let's switch to MyPython. So here we have the source code. And let's, I will just execute it so that you see what, how it works. So I call mypython.py and you see it's an interactive interpreter, simply kind of like, uh, uh, kind of like IPython. So if I say x equals 10, print x. And if I say exit, up, I will exit, right? So it's an interactive interpreter. It's nothing fancy. It's just to demonstrate that you can create this kind of interactive interpreter in actually less than 70 lines of code. So that's quite interesting. Now, what we're going to do is simply add a few debugging, uh, logging messages to our uh, to this application. So the first things first, we need to import the logging module, right? Because that's what we're going to use for all our logging. Now, where are we going to add these uh, logging messages? First, we're going to use them in get user input. So get user input, it's not important that you understand completely how this application works, but just uh, will understand the bare basics so that you have some idea of what our logging messages are useful for. So get user input basically gets input from the user that will be evaluated by our uh, Python interpreter. And a few things can happen. Either things go right as they should, or the user presses Ctrl C and then a keyboard interrupt will be, uh, will be raised. And that's what we capture here. Now, nothing happens in this case, but I think it makes some kind of so uh, sense to say if the key keyboard interrupt is, uh, is triggered, we say logging.error, right? An error occurred, but we're going to ignore it, so it's not a critical error. So we say user pressed control C. Then the user can also press control D that triggers an end of file error, and that will actually cause our program to crash. Now it's debatable whether con pressing Ctrl D to enter the MyPython is really a critical error because I think it's also a valid way to stop MyPython. But let's say for this purpose that it actually is a critical error. Then we would say logging.critical user pressed Ctrl D. Um, and then here in exec function, what happens is that the user input is actually, that we actually get the function that should be used to evaluate the user input. Because Python has two different functions, eval and exec. And exec is used to execute statements. 
And eval is yet used to execute expressions. Now that sounds a bit technical and actually is a bit technical, but for this purpose, let's just say that we want to print out as a debug message type, which of the two we're going to use. And the logic is as follows. Uh, we first try to compile uh, the message as using the eval method. If that raises a syntax error, then it's probably a, uh, an, a, a statement and we're going to use exec. So we say logging.debug uh, using exec. Else, it's, we're going to use eval because we know that it's an expression. So I said logging.debug using eval. All right. Now, let's save the application and let's start my Python again. Up. Now, what do we see now? So say that I say 10 plus 10, that's an expression, Up. out 20. Oh, where did our debug message go, right? Why don't we see using eval? Well, we don't see that because uh, we actually haven't specified uh, it to the logging module that debug messages should be shown, right? Because by default, only warning messages and higher are shown. So if I press Ctrl C here, that will trigger an error, Ctrl C. And then we do actually see error root user press Ctrl C, right? That comes from here. And if I press Ctrl D to end the application, we get the critical error. So if we also want to show the, the, the debug message types, then what we need to do is say to our logging module, and it's not that complicated, we simply say logging.basic.config. Uh, and then we say level equals, and then the minimum level that we want to show. If we want to show everything, we simply say the, uh, logging dot debug. So here we specify, okay, uh, print everything from debug messages uh, up to critical messages. If I now execute this up, and I say 10 plus 10, it will say debug root using eval, right? So now we've specified, we've basically increased the verbosity of our program, you could say. Okay, control D. Now, these are the basics of the logging module. This, is, this, this works quite well, and I think in a majority of cases, this is how you would use the logging module. You would simply use the import it and then say logging.debug, logging.error, etc. But for more complicated use cases, you can also define your own logger object. So what we're doing now is basically using the default root logging object, um, but we can define our own logging object, and then we can, for example, specify how the debug messages should look like, how the logging messages should look. And we can also specify handlers. So we can specify destinations such as files and even network sockets where the debug output, where the logging output should go. Uh, so it offers a lot of flexibility, more flexibility than you will usually need. But in some cases, uh, it, this can be very useful. So let's say that we actually want to create our own logger. How do we do that? Well, we throw this away. And then I define a function and I say define def init uh, logger singleton. Okay, so what we're going to do is use the singleton design pattern, which sounds very fancy, but it's basically a complicated way of saying that we're going to define a global logger variable, which we will use throughout the application, right? So we're going to use one log instance of a logger variable. And so I say global logger. I don't necessarily like globals, right? Globals are kind of frowned upon within the Python community, I would say. But this is one of these cases where I think it makes sense to have a global variable. Oh, global logger. And then I say logger is logging dot get logger. And I specify the name. Name equals uh, my logger. Okay, if I would say name equals root, I would get the default root logger. If I say name equals my logger, I get the logger object. Okay. Now, uh, in principle, um, we can start uh, replacing now all the logging.error messages, logging dot, uh, calls by logger. Dot, right? So instead of calling these module level functions, we call the methods or the functions of our own custom my logger object. Okay. Um, and then of course, we also at the end, or basically when we initialize a program here, we would also need to say init logger singleton, right? Okay, now, is this enough? Well, it is enough to define our logger object, but we wanna be a little bit more fancy. To begin with, we wanna say logger.setLevel, um, and then specify the minimum level of logger, logging messages that we want to process. 
And I think we, again, we're going to use logging.debug. So we're going to process everything. Then we need to specify a handler. Now a handler is basically a destination for the logging messages. And there are different kinds of destinations like the standard output, which would be a stream or a file or a rotating file that is automatically sort of backed up and emptied after a little while or a network socket, all kinds of options exist. What we're going to use for now is basically the stream handler, which is the simplest one to print to the standard output. So I say stream handler is logging dot stream handler and then what which stream are we going to use well we're going to use sys.std out right so the standard output which is basically we're going to stream to the terminal that's what it means and then I, of course i also need to import sys oh. all right and then we say okay uh, what level uh, should the stream handler process well we say set level logging dot warning so what we're doing here basically the logger itself processes everything from debug messages onwards to uh, uh, critical messages but the stream handler that prints to the standard output to the console only concerns itself with warnings and higher so it doesn't print all the messages right so we're we're being selective in what we're printing out to the debug or to the to the console and then i say logger dot add handler um, stream handler. Oh. Okay. Now I save this. Let's run it. Oh, logger has no attribute stream handler. Okay, of course. This should be, this is a class, so it is camel case, stream handler. Oh. Now if I say 10.10, .10, nothing happens because our stream handler does not print uh, debug message types to the standard output. What it does print, if I press Ctrl C, it does pr you print out uh, the error and also the critical error messages. Now you see that the layout, the format is a bit lost now, right? We just have the message and we don't really have this nice uh, description that we had before. And that is because we have not specified the formatter for our, logging, uh, for our uh, logger. And a formatter is basically a way to specify what the logging messages should look like. And it's very powerful, it's very convenient. So how it works is to follow, as follows. I say formatter is logging.formatter, right? So the only th this is a class and the only thing that it does is specify what the logging messages should look like. And then we specify a template string. Now a template sp string is basically, uh, well, a template, right? That is going to be filled in by the logger when we are actually printing logging messages. Now say that we want to have between square brackets some extra information such as percentage time, ask time, s. Now this specifies to the logger that the time in ASCII format, so sort of a weird format, I think, should be included in every logging message. And the logging documentation actually has a list of all the sort of all the variables or all the template things that are recognized by the logger, uh, by the formatter. But ask time is one of them. Then another one is module. So this specifies that we want to have the module in our logging message. Right now we have only one module, right? MyPython.py. So it will always be MyPython. But uh, in many cases, uh, you will have multiple modules and then it is quite useful to know where it comes from, where the logging message comes from. It's also very useful to know which line the logging message comes from, right? And furthermore, it is uh, quite useful to know what the level of the logging message is. So whether it's info or warning or error, etc. And then finally, of course, last but not least, we also need to have the actual message. So here we have a formatter. This specifies what our logging messages are going to look like. And we set, we specify for our stream handler, set, set formatter, formatter, right? Okay, so the different handlers can have different formatters for say that you want your logging messages to look differently for the different destinations. I'm only going to define one formatter here, but you can do that if you want. Okay, let's execute it. Now if I press Ctrl C, uh, logger.error user press Ctrl C. What happened here? Arguments key, oh wait, exit. Up. So I made a mistake here. Percentage level S should actually be 
level name as, right? So if you make a mistake in the template, in the formatter template, you get this kind of weird error message, right? So you need to make sure that you actually use the correct names that the logger recognizes in your formatter template. But if not, you will no notice soon enough because as you see here, it crashed immediately. Okay, up, control C, and then you see, right? Here we have our logging message with nicely formatted with the ask time, with the module, with the line number, and with the, the level name, and of course the message. Okay, control D. And now we have a critical error, critical log logging message to indicate that we're done. Okay, so now we have to find only one handler that prints to the standard output. But the really powerful thing about these logger uh, objects is that you can also define more than one handler. So what we're going to do is specify a file handler. Uh, and that is again a, a pre-specified handler in the logging module, file handler. And we say, okay, I'm going to write logging information to mypython.log. Now, what is different about the file handler? file handler, and I see I made a typo here. Different, different about the file handler is that it has a higher or a lower, I should say, uh, level. So whereas we only want to pre -print, print out warnings and higher to the, debug, to the console, we want to print all messages to the file. And we also want to format the, the file, right? So I say set formatter, up, formatter. And then I add this handler also to the logger. Add handler. Okay, uh, file handler. All right, no, nope, not this one, this one. Save it. Okay, and let's now execute it. Up, execute. And now in the console below, in the terminal below, I'm going to tail the contents of mypython.log. So I'm going to monitor the, what is written to mypython.log. Right now it's empty, there's nothing in it. But if I say 10 plus 10, you will see that in mypython.log, we get a debug logging message, which is not printed to the standard to the standard output because the standard output only prints warnings and higher, whereas the file also prints debug messages, right? So, and if I say, okay, uh, well, print 10, up, you can go, right? Another message. If I say control C, you see that now we, we get this message both in the standard output and in our file. And if I press Ctrl D, again, we get this critical error, this critical logging message, both in the standard output and in the file, right? So this is a very flexible way to sort of specify how you, how and where you want your, your logging messages to go. And I actually use this myself quite a lot. Now, so what have we seen? We have seen the basic usage of the logging module, and we've seen that there are different message types, right? Debug, info, warning, error, and critical. And usually I think you would simply use logging dot and then the name of the, the message type to sort of directly in an easy way log your, uh, log your application information. But we've also seen that if you want have more complicated use cases and you want more, more control over how your data is logged, you can actually specify your own logger object, specify a formatter object to make your logging messages look nice. And you can specify different handlers that uh, route your logging messages in different ways to different destinations, such as files, uh, the standard output, of course, but also even, as I mentioned, but did not show uh, network sockets for very sp special uh, use cases. Now, so I hope you have some understanding of uh, how to use the Python logging module. I would say, if you need to log something in your application, use the logging module. Don't try to devise your own uh, custom solution because the logging module will give you all that you need. And uh, thank you very much for your attention.